kids are cute. Hi friend! In this video, I probably won't be very funny, but what I will do is share with you why I changed my mind about abortion, what I used to believe, what I believe now, and why I changed my mind. And along the way, I'll also be sharing with you my most embarrassing blunder that I'm not proud of about what I used to think about abortion. Oh, and trigger warning, my current thinking about the topic will probably piss you off, no matter which side of the aisle you're on. Hey. Why are you sharing your opinion about abortion, JP? Because as a man who obviously could get pregnant at any time, I just feel that it's important that my voice is heard on the matter. And if you don't think my voice should be heard, then that implies that you don't think men can get pregnant. So be careful because we don't want you contradicting yourself with the conflicting Marxist agendas that your mind is infected with. It's so true. But why I'm really sharing my opinion is I used to think one way about abortion and now I think a completely different way about it. And I just want to share how my thinking has changed because I think it's really important that we allow our thinking to change because that's how we learn and grow. And another reason is that given that the topic of abortion can throw people into a hysterical fit of polarized rage, I just want to share the two cents that comes from my heart and logical discernment not my emotional hysteria. Shut up, you oppressive man. We don't need your toxic masculinity. Hi, feminists. If you see toxic masculinity everywhere you look, then the mirror of life might be trying to tell you something about yourself. But <laughs> I'm sure I'm wrong because I'm just an empowered man and you're just a rageful woman who still hasn't recovered from her daddy issues. Also, my current thoughts on abortion probably aren't what you think they're gonna be either. You might be thinking, oh, JP, Mr. Freedom? Well, of course your thinking is gonna be in line with the conservatives. No, not exactly. I don't like to outsource my thinking to any group. I like to think for myself. And you might also be thinking, well, does that mean, JP, you've gone all crazy liberal on us? You gonna dye your hair blue next? Nope, my thinking definitely isn't in line with what they're told to think. Nor is it in some boring middle ground either. It's more in like a, a straight line that pierces into a different dimension. So let me explain, starting with what I used to think about abortion, and at the end, we'll get to what I do think about abortion now. I used to think pretty much like a leftist about abortion. Not only did I think women should have the right to an abortion, I thought getting an abortion was a pretty empowered choice for a woman to make. Like. <laughs> you go girl, kill that baby. And I also used to think that like in the first trimester, the baby that you're about to kill, it's not really a baby yet, cause I've heard other people say that and it's a pretty convenient thing to think. Here's my most embarrassing blunder about my old thinking about abortion. Now I'm not proud of it, but it's true, so I'm gonna share it. Here it is. The thinking that was going through my mind about abortion, it wasn't my thinking. The leftist propaganda about abortion got to me. I'll admit it, I, I fell for it. And it's 100% my fault. It was nothing other than mental weakness and a lack of self-awareness on my part that allowed it. And the scariest thing about it was I didn't know it was propaganda. I thought it was my own thinking. Uh, leftist propaganda about abortion, JP? Huh? Yeah, without sugarcoating it, I think there's evil tyrannical people in this world, controlled by Satan if I'm being honest, and I am, who want to keep the population of the world small so it's easier for them to control everybody, and they want to destroy the nuclear family so people grow up weaker and are therefore more controllable. And knowing's half the battle. Getting people to get abortions is a big strategy of theirs, and they get people to get abortions through their propaganda that gets people to think that not only are abortions okay, but abortions should be a celebrated, empowered choice. More on that in a minute. But the moral of this story is that propaganda got to me. Now my pronouns are he who thinks for himself, so I can better draw a distinction between what my heart feels and what my own critical thinking says versus the propaganda that comes into my mind from outside sources. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I've made a lot of progress in this area. Thus, 
I no longer believe abortions are just okay, and I certainly don't believe there's something to be celebrated. I look at what I used to think and what's all over the leftist media today, and it's very clear that people are being persuaded to think about abortion as a virtue. This happens through weaponized morality. That's when you have manipulative people who get good people to think that doing something horrible is not only not horrible, but it's a good thing to do. It's a moral thing. In Nazi Germany, it was turn your neighbor in to face a certain death because it's the right thing to do. Now it's scream at your neighbor for not getting jabbed because it helps keep everyone safe. Or peacefully burn down buildings in Portland because racial equality is important. Or get an abortion because of women's empowerment. Sound familiar? Yeah. It's all weaponized morality. I will unapologetically say that pretending a baby isn't a baby and then killing the baby is not a virtue. It might be a choice, but it's certainly not a virtue. Having a choice is empowering, but that doesn't mean any choice you make is an empowered choice. For example, if you're over 21, you have the choice of whether or not to drink large amounts of alcohol every night. And if you choose to get drunk every night, that doesn't mean you're choosing an empowered choice. I think we'd all agree that though the choice is yours, choosing to drink excessively every night is a very disempowered choice. Yet weaponized morality tries to get women to think that they're making an empowered choice if they choose to abort their baby. But what I consider to be a very empowered choice for women around reproduction is for them to have very strong discernment and boundaries about who they have sex with in the first place. Having sex with someone to fill a psychological void so you can feel like you matter to them and are valued by them for a few moments is a very disempowered choice from the Genesis. But I got an abortion so I'm empowered now. No, because anything built on the foundation of a disempowered choice will simply be an extension of disempowerment. The illusion of empowered choice in the abortion scenario is maybe just a rationalization for not improving your self-esteem by using courage to make more empowered choices from the get-go that have you filling your psychological voids from within rather than using men to fill them. Hi again, feminists! Feel free to go back and listen to that part again. And just so you know, getting mad every time you hear someone say something you don't like doesn't make you empowered. It makes you unstable. <laughs> okay, JP, you've shared what you used to think about abortion. So what do you think about abortion? Great question. My current perspective will probably piss off all the leftists, and it'll probably piss off a lot of conservatives who otherwise agree with me on a lot of issues, but instead of just going along with groupthink, I'd rather be honest. So here it is. I think abortions are evil, yet should be legal for the first couple months after conception. Say more, JP. I will. I truly believe that abortion is straight up killing babies, and not only is that not a virtue, that's evil. Yet, if I imagine I'm a woman, as apparently a lot of men are doing nowadays, and I imagine I was raped, which is certainly an act of evil itself, and I got pregnant from it, I think I would get an abortion. Is that still evil? Like, I don't know, probably. But I'd still probably get one. Okay, and you said a couple months after conception? Like, why a couple months, JP? Ah, it's just kind of an arbitrary number. But what I'm certain of, though, is late-term abortions and even mid-term abortions should be completely banned. And for the record, I don't believe any of the BS that says, well, a baby isn't a baby until we want it to be a baby. No, a baby is a baby from the moment of conception. And there's evil lunatics out there that want to be able to kill babies up until the moment of birth. And there's even a California bill that's been proposed that would allow people to kill babies up to 28 days after birth. There's no question in my mind that there's nothing but pure evil behind this. And if you give these evil lunatics an inch, they'll take a mile but they'll take that mile inch by inch so your mind acclimates along the way and can't quite distinguish how outrageously evil the acts are. Unchecked, you can only just imagine where these evil lunatics will have abortion in 20 years. Oh, your kid's two years old. Uh, does he talk yet? No. Oh, well, a clump of cells isn't really a human until it learns language. So why don't you take him out back for an abortion while we celebrate you? Okay. So you might be saying, okay, JP, you think abortion is pure evil, yet you don't think it should be 100% banned? 
don't you think we have a responsibility to protect unborn children? That's a great question, and I could imagine how that could be very true. And another way I'm looking at it in this moment is through the lens of a freedom maximalist. For the baby inside that mother, God has assigned that mother and father to be the protectors of him or her. And in the name of not letting the God-given freedom and sovereignty over the mother's being being infringed on while the baby's inside of her, I do worry that outsiders stepping in to try to protect the unborn child could be an erosion of freedom that exists on a very slippery slope. And if the parents not only don't protect the fetus, but actually harm it, then that means they are very shitty protectors. And from there, that's perhaps for God to deal with them about, not for other people to play God and deal with them about. And I don't know if I'm right with this part of my thinking. I just know it's what my thinking is in this moment. So in conclusion, I think abortion is evil and should be a choice with limits on it. And I think it's a very shitty, evil choice. I believe children are divine droplets of God incarnated to allow divinity to unfold and for heaven on earth to be lived. And I think the killing of divine droplets of God is nothing other than satanic. I also believe there's many loving women out there who have had abortions and now they feel the pain and regret of it. To them I say, please have a voice so your light can help illuminate a better way for other women out there who would otherwise be misguided by all the weaponized morality and the abortion propaganda. I also believe that if you're in your heart and you truly ask for it, God, yourself, and your baby's soul will forgive you. We've all done things in our life we feel remorse about, and certainly including me. Further in conclusion, I believe there's vicious propaganda out there that tries to frame abortion as a virtuous thing to do. I recommend never outsourcing your thinking to the propaganda or the evil tyrants controlling it while you think for yourself instead. Finally, I love evolving my thinking, which means having the courage to disagree with what I used to think is true so that I can learn, grow, and adopt beliefs that serve me better now. And I could be delusional, but I think it's beneficial for everyone to do the same thing. That's why I made this video, to help encourage it. Now to you! What do you think about abortion? Is it any different than what you used to think about it? What topics have you allowed yourself to change your thinking about over time? And how have you become empowered as a result? And if you haven't changed your thinking about anything, how's it feel to be super certain of yourself while you refuse to grow? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay free, my friend.